Hello everyone, welcome to Respectful Dave, your online free chess coach. And today I'm going to talk about something that I see happening a lot and it's a little bit of a mistake from my side of things and from my experience, in my experience and in my opinion, which is learning the opening when you're starting your chess career. So let's say you're a beginner, you're just starting to play chess. Maybe you're doing it for, for in a serious way, maybe you're doing it for fun. Either way, if you start working in your openings right away, that's a mistake. I'll tell you why. Um, I think the only thing you have to understand from the opening is that you have to castle as soon as possible. That's it. Other than that, you shouldn't worry about the opening. But David, I like this idea of, of, of oh, outplaying my opponent from the opening. Or I like this idea of checkmating my opponent in three moves or four moves and winning quickly. Well, number one, you won't be able to use these techniques against very strong players. So that's not going to uh, serve. Number two, you might get a winning position in the opening, but you won't be able to do anything about it because you won't you won't be able to win it more most of the time because you don't know tactics which is what i'm going to su suggest in this video so that was a little bit of a spoiler already and number three let's say you do win a game in four moves um the the, the opening trick you used will not be sustainable okay maybe you won once with that trick and you didn't learn anything you just learned that memorizing in chess is useful which is actually not at least not at the beginning and um that's why you should worry about openings more in more later in your chess career so let me show you what i'm talking about let's say you're playing with the white pieces in this position you develop your pieces in the opening you're, you're very happy you're you're getting ready to castle and now you're outside your opening theory so you just learn that you have to put your knights out you have to put your bishop out queen d2 and you castle and now you learn that's everything you studied from the opening. You've very, very memorized very, very well that you have to get to this position. But after this position, in your book of theory, the author writes down, hey, white is slightly better in this position. So you should be able to know what you do. But the problem is that you didn't work in strategy or tactics and you just worked on memorizing openings. So when you're in this position, you're thrown off at a move like bishop b4 which is what black plays. And in this position, you you collapse. You play king b1, which is a wrong move. It's a blunder because you didn't know how to play. You, you don't know how to play. You just memorized some moves. And your opponent plays knight e4, attacking the, the queen and putting pressure in the knight. You can't take because you're going to lose your queen. You're going to play something like queen d3, which also loses because now your opponent is going to take Knight takes f2 was already winning, but your opponent is a little bit more ambitious. Play c5, right? And your king is very exposed. And yeah, after a couple of um, moves, you just realize that knight c3 is coming and queen takes a2 is coming and knight takes d1 is there. So it's a big disaster and you lose the game in less than 15 moves. This is the extreme case of someone who's memorizing opening moves and not understanding them and putting all their effort into this stage of the game rather than tactics. Now, what is tactics? Chess, by nature, is a tactical game. It's 99% tactics. David, what do you mean with tactics? What does that mean? Well, so in this position, for example, you have many, many moves. You have pawn to d3, pawn to c3, pawn to b4, queen to e2, bishop to c4, right? I can go on and on. And some of them are more forced than others. So tactics are is, is this part of chess that forces you to find a sequence of moves that are forced or a sequence of moves that attack or a sequence of moves that create a threat. It could be either a sequence of moves, by the way, or only one move, like in this case. So if you take a look at this position, you might be tempted to move this pawn to h4. And you might not have a good reason because of that. You have to have a good reason. It's, th th that's not a secret. Um, you have to always take a look at the forced moves. So tactics in this position would allow you to find knight takes e7 which is check sorry check black has to do something about that king d8 and now your your knight is attacked you have to do something about it so you looked at force moves right so you wouldn't check this one first because that's moving to an empty square what about taking this rook wouldn't that be more forced yes it would it would 100 percent so you would take the rook on a8 and after this sequence of moves all the way from here you took on c7, check, you took a pawn, and then you took a rook, and white is winning. That's tactics. If you study openings, you won't be able to find this. David, how do I become good at tactics? Well, 
that's why I'm I'm here. <laughs> Come to leeches.org. You're gonna go under the learning tab and you're gonna click practice. You're gonna find all these blue blocks. They're all very useful for very, very beginners. So you're gonna click on peace checkmates one, checkmate patterns, checkmate pattern. So all of these are very, very basic basic. For example, let's say I click on checkmate patterns. Let's say you're dropped into this position and we're trying to train our checkmating patterns. We, are, we have to think logically, right? So which piece are we going to move? Do you think it's going to be the pawns? Do you think the pawns are going to checkmate? They look far away from the king, so I don't think any of these pawns are going to get there. The king is not near the opponent's king either, so... I mean, it doesn't make sense to move it either. It doesn't even make sense to move a king to check another king. That's not possible. And eventually we're going to realize that it has to be with a rook. So you take a look at all these moves. Rook e6, rook e5, down here. It doesn't make too much sense. The king is not... Sorry, the rook is not going anywhere near the king if it goes down. You then look at all these moves to the left. Same thing. Doesn't really do anything. You take a look at this move, which actually takes a pawn. And then you realize, well, king takes... King takes rook is going to be pretty good for for my opponent because i gave up a, a, a five point rook for a one point pawn and then you're going to realize oh rook e8 is actually winning because it's taking it's checking the king and the king cannot escape and you can do that right in this puzzle right and then you're dropped into the next puzzle and it's a little bit more complicated but eventually you realize that this is the winning sequence and then you got into this the next puzzle right so you you get it you practice 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 and at some point you have this pattern recognized you move to the next pattern because guess what once you know this pattern in the next game you're going to play odds are that you might be able to use this the more patterns you recognize the more you're going to use them in your own games once you do that you will stop blundering number one and number two you will make the most of your opponent's blunders so this is why you should not work in the opening you should work in your tactics so just to summarize someone who trained let's say an hour on tactics, is always going to beat someone who trained an hour on openings. So in this game, let's say white plays d4, we get to this position, black is playing the French defense, black is taught to, 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 to take their pieces like that, and castle, that's what the theory tells them. And then after this, bishop d3 move, e5 move, knight d7, h4 is a little bit uh, outside the book, this is not the main line. The main line goes something like bishop takes and f4, so h4 is a little bit tricky. They're outside their opening book. So they take, which is a big mistake. Once again, black is outside the opening book. They haven't worked in their tactics, so they don't realize this is a mistake. Someone who has worked in tactics quite a lot, or a little bit at least, would realize that this is a big mistake. Because now white plays the very forcing move, bishop takes h7. David, why is this such a great move? Well, it's check in the first place. Second of all, if black doesn't take, then... We just eliminated one of the pawns near our opponent's king, so you, that's not good. And second of all, queen h5 is coming. So, king takes h7 happened. This is the most forcing move. And now, the reason why this is such a big mistake is that now, black is in trouble. All of a sudden, the rook on h1 comes alive. The most, the, the piece that is, is struggling more in development is the rook. So, when the rook comes alive early in the game, it usually does that with a very powerful with very powerful consequences. So the rook is alive, king has to go somewhere to g6, and what's going to happen is that because white has done their tactics, eventually they're going to find out checkmate. Um, and yeah, it's the end of the game. White worked more in tactics rather than in the opening. That's why white won. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will, I will answer them very happily. And also, just, just start doing tactics. Don't worry about the opening, it's really fine. Just start calculating move by move. Chess is very concrete. You would be impressed. Computers are strong because they're very concrete. So that's the main reasons why computers are strong. But that's another video. Once again, have a nice day. Thank you very much. And I will see you soon.